<laughs> you know, Lee, it's always so nice to work with someone like you. You know, it's kind of relaxed and easy going. Thank you, Joe. I mean, you're, you're always happy about something. You're grinning like a Jesse <laughs> cat. You're smiling all the time. <laughs> Of course, I'll say this. If I had a set of teeth like yours, I'd be smiling all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, George, you certainly don't have any problem with your teeth, do you? Well, not, not really, but uh, I, I really haven't been to a dentist lately. I, I haven't had my teeth checked. I think a rule for everybody is you should see your dentist at least every six months. Well, I think that's a good idea, and if they want to see my dentist, I think he could use the business. And he's, <laughs> he's at uh, 327 Walnut Avenue, and he's got a full set of tools. He's Listen, I, I don't mean your dentist. I mean their dentist they should see. You're not afraid to go to oh. dentists, are you, Charlie? Oh, me? No, no. I, Well, I get a little... Uh, I mean, you shouldn't be nervous about dentists, though, because you know why? Because your dentist is your friend. Mm -hmm. He's not your best friend. <laughs> But he's your friend. That's yeah. right, yeah. Of course, where I first started getting nervous about dentists it goes back to when I was a kid. You know how they carry over? Because uh -huh. we had a dentist in town. He was not the best dentist in the whole world either, you know. Hey, Old man. Doc Newby was his name. And uh, he was kind of old, and, uh, and he shook a lot, too. You know? <laughs> and, uh, oh, he shook real good. And, and, and he couldn't see very well, either. You know? Really? And, as a matter of fact, it was just plain dumb luck if he ever found your mouth. <laughs> Oh. Tell you what he do, he used to just kind of feel around there till he felt a moist spot, you know, and then he'd go in there. <laughs> and, uh, and I'll tell you something else about old Doc Newby. When he says open up, you better open up right now or, or he's going to go right in through your ear. He <laughs> oh, he is something. Oh, i tell you. That's the most frightening story I've ever heard about Dennis. No yeah. wonder you don't like them. Yeah, it is a little scary, but yeah. I remember one time I went to him. He's kind of funny. This one time I go in there and got in the chair and he said, open up. Oh, that's like that. And he got his little mirror in there. You know uh -huh. how they do it, yeah. the mirrors. And yeah. he poked around there and he said, well, he said, Mr. Goble, you got a pretty ugly looking molar there. <laughs> and I said, well, now I said, I got a couple of bicuspids that ain't won no beauty prizes either. <laughs> <laughs> and he, uh, he laughed about that I for a while. Did, yeah. Yeah. Matter of fact, he got to laughing and shaking and he dropped his little mirror right down my throat. Oh no. Yeah. Sounds bad, but it turned out all right, because he had another mirror. <laughs> but the trouble with him, you know, he knew what he was doing, but he wasn't coordinated. Mm -hmm. now, he wasn't coordinated at all, this guy. Matter of fact, he couldn't even walk and chew gum at the same time. <laughs> you know, a guy like that should be arrested, really. Well, I suppose so, but he was quite a guy, you know. He was? Yeah, he thought real good. I remember one guy, this would have been a problem to anybody else, this fellow named Toothy Callahan came to see him, an old toothy, he was a quite a, he had 32 teeth, just like everybody else, except his were all uppers. <laughs> and uh, old Doc, he thought about that for a while, and, and he didn't want to pull any teeth, and he didn't, what he did was made another full set of lowers, you know. Oh, right. And that toothy, he was something, when he smiled, you know, he lit up the whole room, you know. Oh, really? Just like you and your candles. Oh, listen, George, speaking of candles, yeah. I got something I want to show you. Come on over, you? come on. What do you think of this? Look at that, look Boy, at that. Boy, that's beautiful. What is it? Well, it's a music stand. Yeah, but how come it's on fire? Well, no, I thought, I thought that maybe to do a number by candlelight would be kind of romantic. Yeah, and it saves on electricity, too. <laughs> you got a point. Now, listen, George, I wrote this number just for you. You're gonna love it. Oh. All you gotta do is follow the music. And I'll play right along with you, right? That's all, yeah. I always wanted to do concert work. You oh, know well, wonderful. And I'll tell you what you what? do. Now, you play the introduction on the piano. So. Okay. And the way we'll do it, we play it right at the very beginning and we get that over with. Okay? That's a good idea. That's a, you right. know, you stop and play it in the middle of the song, people don't know what you're doing anyway, you know. So play it at the beginning. All right, right now. Okay, here we go. <laughs> How do you like it so far? I love it. Shall we go further? Well, I think we might as well go through with it. No? Okay, here we go. Aruba Liberace. Aruba Liberace. Aruba Liberace. Play mambo for me. Aruba Liberace. Liberace, Aruba Liberace, it's George will agree.
the hard part, Doc. Uh, you ready? I'm ready. And...